So as it's evident to obviously our, our audio listeners um, and other platforms, you all have a, a fantastic speaking ability and obviously great chemistry together. Is there any tips for uh, the verbal presentation? I mean, obviously, some teams uh, tend to overlook it and leave it till last minute. I know we certainly did. I think uh, for us... Um, with the verbal, it's the it's, it's one of the most important parts of the competition. It's 180 marks. Oh, and it's 160 now, isn't it? Uh, but it's, it's a heck of a lot of marks um, for literally just talking about what you've done, talking about your innovations, talking about the people you've collaborated with, and what you've learned. Um, and it, it, it's, it, it can be it can make or break teams. It really can. You, you see a world teams that that have fantastic cars, fantastic portfolios, and fall down on the verbals. Um, cause it's worth a lot of marks. And with us, we sort of, we put, we attributed that whole sort of section like to me. So we actually had like a team member that was working on that specifically. So I, I sort of, um, well, me and Amelia together wrote out the agenda and, you know, strategically wrote it to who was saying what and where they were saying it, why they were saying it, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then, and then from there, every time we'd film a verbal, every, I'd send it to Amelia, our lead teacher, Ted, me. We'd write pages of comments, send it all back, redo it again, pages of comments. And, and, um, so, so I've been working with like team members individually. I mean, when we all started this, some, some of the members could talk fantastic. Some of them, when they, when they got in front of judges, um, they just couldn't find their words. Um, but, yeah, it, ta- it takes it takes time. Uh, it, it's not easy. It's not easy talking to a panel of of experts in their fields and, and very intelligent people, and that might not be giving you the full eye contact and whatever. So it takes a lot of development. But we just kept refining, 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 and and after a while, you get the hang of it, eh, Abby? Yeah, I used to sound like I was. Um saying what was it what did we used to say a funeral speech so like a eulogy. Eulogy. Yeah. Yeah. eulogy but basically we just did it over and over again and we did it in different like places with different people so we did presentations to sponsors to men, like a, like our younger team we just got so used to talking it <laughs> just became a bit of like we're just all a bit gobby now basically <laughs> <laughs> just all yeah. Just still can't stop talking. It gets to the point in the competition where, like, we have this thing where we have our main points, so like aerodynamics, scrutineering, blah, blah, blah. And we can talk about one of those points for, like, I don't know, up to probably at a stretch, yeah, 10 minutes. Just keeping talking and talking and talking, putting everything you know into it. And we've done that so many times that I, we could all probably recite something in our sleep about it. Like, we've probably had dreams just saying it out. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've also received like quite a lot of feedback or not feedback questions from people other teams about this and I think one of the most important things to to consider when you're doing a verbal is the scorecards a lot of people kind of I, I don't know they maybe miss it but there are obviously three main sections your innovation collaboration and learning experience and you've got to make sure that everything you talk about in your verbals is relevant to, to the scorecard well not just the the verbals for every aspect of the competition, you've got to make sure that you're hitting every point on the scorecard, otherwise you're not going to get the mark. Yeah, the one, the toughest area of the scorecard that we always struggled with was the um, effective levels of liveliness and engagement and those those sorts of phrases that came up. Um, because it's tough to engage someone for 10 minutes talking about some of the stuff. I mean, if you're an enterprise judge and you're talking about generative, if, if I sit, if I'm sitting there on a verbal and someone's talking about generative design or, 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 or a bearing insertion at all, um, it's going to be quite strenuous on the brain. So you've got to sort of, you've got to keep it light and you've got to keep it, you know, positive and, and smiley and stuff like that. And it's, it's really tough to find the balance between, you know, like, sarcastic and and joyful and and or like really boring um and and just being professional so you've got you've got to take time to find that balance it's not going to come straight away it's taken us three years to find it and we're still probably a little bit off the mark but it is it's really it is really tough and one thing i will say with this virtual 
world of F1 that it's currently going through. Obviously, there's regionals, nationals that look like they're going to be virtual for the next year and maybe a world finals. Just a little a little thing. I'd say you don't feel like you need to use a professional filming company and a professional editor to, to do your verbals. You know, if you do and you have that, you have that budget and money, go for it. But it's not going to provide any sort of point advantage to you. Um, we did everything ourselves. I edited it all together. We all filmed from home with our normal phones. Um, I don't have a white wall in my house, so I put up a sheet. So behind me in my verbal presentation was a sheet. It was very, very annoying to get up each time. And I pulled it very taut, so it looked like a wall. But you don't, you don't need the highest production quality, um, like here and off the track. I mean, it, 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 you know, this is this is like there, and our verbals is like there. Um, but yeah, you, you've got to, um, you, you just, you just got to focus on the mark scheme. Don't worry about getting professional this, professional that. Just talk through your innovations, your collaborations, your learning process, and you can't go wrong. Now, Zach, given that you've, uh, Me? You, yeah, you've um, just spent that time talking about how you, you, you don't need to do it professionally, um, did you have to mm-hmm. restrain yourself? Because I know you are a big fan of you know, Quentin Tarantino and, and, and filmmaking. Do you have to restrain yourself from not trying to make too much out of your verbal presentation? Yeah, I did try several camera angles throughout my, uh, throughout my verbals <laughs> to ensure that it was, you know, I had a side shot. And, uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I love movies and I watch a heck of a lot of movies. And and so for me, it was really good fun editing together this mini film, essentially. Um, and it, it gave me a little bit of creativity and something to do. Uh, it was great learning the whole new editing software, although very long. Uh, it, it isn't easy, but um, no, not really. I think we always wanted to keep it um, like a normal verbal. We wanted to be us standing there us interacting with the with the slides and with the thingy and we, we didn't want to distract from what we were saying you know if, if you've got you know flying animations and and special effects you're not adding anything to your point you're just taking away from what you're saying and when the judges you know put, put laps, close that laptop screen they're going to go what have i what have i just watched it's like being in the cinema and they would have missed the stuff you were saying about your important innovations the stuff that you really want them to remember the stuff that we wanted to remember was generative, getting the lowest, the, the, these new things that we've done that we're super proud of, that we want to tell them about. And we hope that they came away from our verbal remembering them, not remembering that edit I did in the first thing. And I had nothing against any teams. I know I know a lot of teams did um, use professional film companies and stuff, um, but we, we simply just didn't have the budget for it. And you can do everything at home that you can do with a professional film company. It might not be in 4K. But at the end of the day, you, you're cutting your verbal. It has to. It had to be what 250 megabytes for the world finals, the final um, things. You're cutting it down anyway. It's not going to be 4K quality. Um, we, and it's a tiny file when those cameras are recording colossal, colossal files. So at the end of the day, uh, we just felt that it wasn't necessary. But you know, if you want to, go ahead. I think knowing what you you need to show and what you don't is it is something that you uh as a team worked out very um well because you recognize that yeah as you said it would detract 